Anti-Muslim and anti-Latino hate speech on social media has become commonplace, both on social media but also, uh, regrettably, on the presidential campaign trail. We hear this stuff every day. And here on The Young Turks, we've said many times that where you have the anti-Muslim speech and you have the anti-Hispanic speech and you have uh, the anti-African American speech, you don't have to wait too long for anti-Semitic speech to catch up. It, it usually ends up following that train. And according to a new report by the Anti-Defamation League, it's here, actually. Uh, it's been around for a while, actually. From August 2015 to July 2016, the ADL found 2.6 million tweets that included anti-Semitic language with a spike in anti-Semitism this year. The ADL found that Twitter users viewed those tweets a staggering 10 billion times. And so as the presidential election has heated up, the number of anti-Semitic tweets has gone up. And they're not simply going out there and then fading into nothingness. Uh, for whatever reason, the people who are tweeting these things end up having people read them 10 billion times. To put that in perspective in comparison to the reach of more traditional forms of media, that's roughly the equivalent social media exposure advertisers could expect from a $20 million Super Bowl ad, which is scary. And uh, we've talked a lot about normalization of previously mm. radical behavior and language in this presidential election. And so now, like, Trump is doing that where he can. Other candidates are doing that where they can. But the supporters are doing it, too. And once you've seen a lot of these tweets, maybe it doesn't seem so shocking to you anymore. And that's not good. That's not good for America. No, it's shocking. It's appalling. And one of the things that's frustrated me about it, too, is that you know there were many years where you couldn't criticize Israeli policy because you'd be accused of being anti-Semitic, you know, if you say, gee, I think maybe the settlement, the way they're handling the settlements is is, is bad for Israel's security, it's not fair to the Palestinians. The oh, you're wall anti seems like a bad idea. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you're anti-Semitic. And uh, now, and I've been saying all along, the real anti-Semitism is on the right. And here, you know, we have evidence of it. Yeah. And, and the fact is also that, you know, as soon as you start getting into prejudice against one group, as you say, it opens the door for prejudice against all groups, and yeah. it mainstreams it, it normalizes it, to use your word, and uh, we're seeing that now, and it's horrific. And yeah. I don't know, I don't know how to undo it. I mean, I don't know how you roll that back. I, I mean, the, the hope is that there's always going to be a percentage of the population that they're just small, hateful people, and they think that that people who aren't like them in various ways, sexuality, religion, nat national origin, race are to blame for everything. It's, it's simplistic thinking. It's the sort of thinking that gives rise to conspiracy theories. It's the fact that reality is complicated, politics is complicated, understanding any issue is extremely complicated, and uh, saving cognitive effort is something that in various places in our life we need to do to get through the day. And unfortunately, they try to do it on the most important issues in the world, and they try to save so much energy that they end up just thinking that people from Mexico are responsible for everything. The, the, the issue would be if those people then elect a president who agrees with them. That's when it becomes not just a constant sense of um, a source of terror for, for people online, but it could actually be driving U.S. policy, uh, foreign policy or domestic policy. And you know who, expends vir who else expends virtually no energy during the day? A lizard. Oh my God. I'm just God. throwing that out. No, no, look, it, it's a serious subject, obviously, and it is absolutely appalling. And and there's it's very tough to turn it around. I don't know the extent to which social media has made this worse or whether it's just exposing it because yeah. now anybody can instantly connect with anybody else. So I don't know if it's just always been there and now yeah. we're seeing it or if it's... Well, it's hard to say because, of course, we know that, I mean, we spent how many centuries in this country with lynchings? Right. That's like, true. Like, there's always been the worst excess, excesses of, uh, of racism, sexism, Islamophobia, and all that. that that's that been a part of our national DNA uh, since before we were an independent country. Um, but, it, but at the same token, while a tweet isn't as bad as, as a lynching, I, I do think that it's, it's both more visible clearly, but I also think that it is worse in that aspect. Because I think there's a lot of people who have these thoughts... Who would have mentioned to someone, one of their friends, right. they would have said the N-word or something like that. But now they feel empowered to reach out to people they've never met and to send them words and, and memes. And we're going to get into some of those in just a little bit. And so I think it is, it's both. I think it's more visible and more prevalent, I think. 
Yeah, and I think there were people, for example, during the primary, because I was working for Bernie, I got the most vile, hateful things on social media from Hillary supporters, a lot of whom were in college, by the way, and I, I didn't know if they were part of groups or if it was an organized effort or whatever, but, you know, the other thing about social media is obviously you're also, like, telegraphing this to your future employers. Yeah. You know, uh, if you're going to apply to grad school, whatever it is, or, you know, it's just... We're an open book now, for better and for worse, and yeah. sometimes I think it's for worse. For sometimes I think it is, unfortunately. Uh, so let's let's give you a little bit of uh, more of an idea of what this sort of harassment looks like day to day. Uh, give you a breakdown on the the current activities of the alt right. Uh, so the ADL summarized what's going on, saying a juggernaut of bigotry we believe reinforces and normalizes anti-Semitic language and tropes on a massive scale. And we've even seen uh, anecdotal evidence from uh, some of these white supremacist and alt right. Uh, conferences where some of the the new alt-right is trying to like they want to like have their cake and eat it too they want to whip up people to hate African Americans and Hispanics but they understand that for some people anti-semitism is a bridge too far and so they try to like hush hush that part and then the more traditional white supremacists at the meetings are like well th th these whippersnappers are they're 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 gutting the core of white supremacy and they're taking away the whole point which is at the end of the day to take out the Jews, unfortunately. And so uh, that's a horrifying battle to see happening, um, but you should understand that it is going on. And by the way, uh, the, the people who are being particularly targeted by this, it turns out, are journalists. You said that you've received uh, uh, various forms of hate speech online. Uh, researchers looked more closely at attacks on the Twitter accounts of some 50,000 journalists and found almost 20,000 anti-Semitic tweets directed at them, with almost 70% of the invective coming from just 1,600 accounts, the sort of the super haters. Uh, these aggressors are disproportionately likely to self-identify as Donald Trump supporters, conservatives, or part of the alt-right a loosely connected group of extremists, some of whom are white supremacists, which I think is uh, an overly nice way to describe. Uh, I would say it's an extremely polite. The ADL is being too polite in this case, perhaps. Uh, the words that appear most frequently in those tweets are Trump, nationalist, conservative, and white. If you see white nationalist, understand what they actually mean when they're saying that. Uh, many of the anti-Semitic tweets include images of the journalists that are, they are directed at, photoshopped to show them inside gas chambers or among the corpses of Holocaust victims, uh, tweets about putting Jewish journalists and their family members in ovens or having them made into lampshades are not uncommon. Uh, one in particular, Hadass Gold, a media reporter at a Politico who was born in Israel, received a private message on Twitter that included an image Jesus. of her with a bullet hole in her forehead and a yellow star of David on her shirt with the quote, don't mess with our boy Trump or you'll be first in line for the camp. And we also know that one of the journalists working for uh, an Arizona newspaper that traditionally endorses Republican candidates came out against Donald Trump, and she began receiving uh, constant death threats as a result of that. Now look, you, you can never be responsible for all of your supporters right. online, we understand that. Uh, there are bad people in every group, and there are people pretending to be a part of any group that are bad. But we know that this is an anecdote, and this isn't rare, this isn't even uncommon. Um, yeah. And, you, you know, if I could ju just jump in for a second, too, and I, I've noticed this n not only among Trump, but a lot of the writers uh, and commentators on the right. You know, when I was writing a lot about bankers, I, I started to get these comments, string them up, that kind of thing. Take every banker and string them, sh line them up and shoot them. And I started to say, That's hey, dangerous. you know, dial it down, people. That's not the appropriate response. The appropriate response is let's get some laws that control this stuff. But you never hear Trump say, dial it down. You never yeah. hear Sean Hannity say, dial it down. Even after one of the guys who went out and shot some people had his book on the shelf, or Bill O'Reilly. Yeah. You never say, hey, cool it, people. This is not the right way to handle the problem. So I do put some of this at Trump's feet. Not just because, not, yeah. he, he's not responsible for all his supporters, but he's responsible for doing the right thing. Oh, I apologize if I seemed like I wasn't blaming Donald Trump. I, I, I agree. I mean, look, what I'm concerned about is there, there's always, anybody can pose as a supporter of someone. And so right. there are people who are tweeting stuff to me now, uh, implying that they're Bernie Sanders supporters. And I look at their Twitter their right. Twitter history, they're not Bernie Sanders supporters. They just want that cloak, that cloak of legitimacy of being part of the group of the person they're targeting. Uh, but with Donald Trump, I mean, we know he's told uh, people, go knock the hell out of these protesters, I'll pl pay your legal fees. That's why all these jackasses with their Project Veritas, can, they can go F themselves with their idea that one contractor supposedly riled up some supporters. I don't care what a contractor who worked temporarily for Hillary Clinton did if the candidate himself is saying, go 
attack these people. And you have interviews with people at Trump uh, rallies, Trump supporters saying, the next time we might have to kill them. Right. He never tamped down this violence. Uh, Sean Hannity, too. I, I will even give a little bit of credit to someone like Bill O'Reilly, who he's been responsible for a lot of especially um, abortion-related right. oh, hatred sure. and Dr. violence. Dr. Tiller. Dr. Tiller, Tiller the baby the killer. Yeah. But at least with some of the more recent Trump stuff, he's occasionally told Trump to dial it down a little bit. And it's sad that that even merits credit at this point. Yeah, um, for sure. Yeah, but look, uh, th th this sort of hatred. I mean, when you when you kick this uh, this bee's nest, and then they start coming up, I don't know if they're going to stop. I don't know if once the election is done, people will go back to whatever their interests were beforehand, or if this is the new in thing for uh, extremely racist people online. But it is scary, and it's especially scary uh, if you're a journalist right now to be for receiving sure. some of this hatred, and especially if you're a female journalist. The combination of violent threats and especially sexually violent threats is pervasive. It's just an expectation every day, and that's not where we should be. You know who makes independent media possible? You guys. Because of you, we can actually do this show free of any outside influence. That's what makes us so strong. Become a member today. TYTnetwork.com slash join. You are the media.